I have started the recording. I always want to clap and be like, everybody, <laughs> I'm sure the clap is not, <laughs> is not helpful, but all right, I'm going to start. Allison, forgive us. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I am so excited. Today we have Dr. Makita Phillips. She's an extra, extra, extra special guest. Oh, yeah, three. That's a lot okay. of extras. <laughs> A lot of extras. <laughs> she hails from from Clinton, Maryland, and she is currently a thermal structure analyst at the John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, or APL. And right now, she's doing flight systems for defense and space applications. If you're wondering what she has done prior to this moment, she has her bachelor's and master's from in mechanical engineering from FAMU. And she earned her PhD in mechanical engineering from North Carolina State University. So she is a notable because she is the first African-American woman to graduate with a PhD in mechanical engineering from NC State. So y'all are looking at history. For those of you watching the YouTube, you are hearing history. For those of you listening. And her dissertation was entitled, The Effect of Alternative Installation Materials on Quench Propagation in Rebatuku three is speaking in tongues oh <laughs> what, what does this say <laughs> incorrect incorrect <laughs> i told you, you this is what was gonna happen to <laughs> yes please. please rare earth barium copper oxide and then the snapchat sign or the the tiktok that's, symbol it's a delta it's a delta that. but that's just the <laughs> chemical full property part but you just that's just how you say it you just say rebco for just say rebco Rebco. Okay. All of that. <laughs> so after she did all of that work, she was awarded the ASEE slash NSF small business postdoctoral research diversity fellowship, as well as the California Alliance postdoctoral fellowship to pursue her postgraduate work at the California. Oh, wait, that was not right. At the University Allison, of California, over. Los Angeles. No, but I, yeah, there were words here. Because there's Georgia Tech in here somewhere. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, so the first one is uh, California Alliance with UCLA. Second one is ASEE with uh, Georgia Tech and Carbikes. Okay, so they're in the wrong order. Mm-hmm. Allison, we're going to say that one more time. Thank you. <laughs> your your typing sounds so aggressive. <laughs> because I'm like, like Kermit. just using one hand. Oh. So I'm gonna say that you had so after that, California Alliance postdoc for at UCLA and then the ASEE NSF postdoc Car- at Georgia Tech and Carbice. We'll say Carbice first. Carbice and Georgia Tech. So Carbice Tech, Corporation slash Georgia Tech. Okay, and you're gonna have to tell us all like of Like what, what that means, means. yeah. I, later, <laughs> yes, when we get to that part Everyone of the story. always asks, <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Because that's one of the SBIR things, mm-hmm. right? Oh, sweet. Precisely. All right. all right, just start at the postdoctoral part. Yeah. So after all of that, she received the California Alliance Postdoctoral Fellowship to pursue postgraduate work at UCLA. And then after that, she received the ASEE and NSF Small Business Postdoctoral Research Diversity Fellowship at the Carbice Corporation slash Georgia Tech. So her work in general deals with, um, or at that time dealt with thermal fluids and heat transfer. She likes to solve problems that rely on this interdisciplinary balance of thermal, electrical, and structural properties. Uh, She really focused on superconductors and how insulation material and design can affect their thermal management. So all that means is y'all have these phones and computers, they get hot. So somebody Mm. has to manage how all of that heat is uh how that proper how that is affecting the system because again we live in a physical world um currently she's using multi why did i not practice that word (laughs) 
You don't even have to say that. That's I enough. Don't, right. I'm like, why well, would no, you that, care? That's good. Yeah, you're good there. <laughs> yeah. So take out the currently. Yeah, because I don't because I don't do that currently. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that was there. I don't remember putting that there. It's a ghost in here. Okay. So yeah, that was good. I'm gonna start again after man. So after management, Allison, can we start with this? She's also been the director of curriculum development for algebra by seventh grade. She's been the National Leadership Institute chair for NSBE or the National Society of Black Engineers. She's had a lot of positions with NSBE. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> and another fun fact is that she won over $15,000 to go towards her student loans on a game show called Paid Off. So Makita, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us. You I know didn't know that last Thank part, you. child. I got questions. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Yeah, tell us about the game show real quick before we get into it. <laughs> okay, so the funny story is I had a friend that was visiting for her birthday. And to kill time, randomly there was this game show holding auditions. Went, filled out the paperwork, did the little test thing that they had. Give it some time and I got a call saying, hey, would you like to be on the show? Because I tested well. <laughs> you had to do a camera test and everything and I tested well and they said, would you like to? And I said, sure. Ironically, where the, the studio was, was right across from my building at Georgia Tech because <laughs> Turner sits right there. Oh, and great. so I went on the show. Um, they, they taped everyone at, at one time and I just answered these random questions and they were, <laughs> one of them I had to- They were mechanical engineering questions. Some right? of them, but most of them, some of okay. them were pop culture things. So they, um. who sings, you know, I want it that way, or who sings at the end of the row? It was like Backstreet Boys or wow. Boys to Men. It was things like that, or like who has this money, or what type of thing is a drink? It was things like that. But then there were some technical things too. So, but it was it was a good experience. And then we went to shoot some B footage at the Georgia Aquarium. So I got to go there for free. Aww. So but yeah, and then I, I, of course, I won the money, and I couldn't tell anyone that I even went on the show, um, let alone won for a long time until it aired. So I'm really good at keeping secrets. Right. <laughs> drove around in a beamer and was like, I can't tell you how I got this. What? But watch True TV. And she said it out. was for her student loan. Yeah, I okay? know. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, and then sh <laughs> shortly after, someone hit my car. So. I always, oh, I also had man. to take care of that. So, <laughs> yeah, fun Jeez. times. Atlanta drivers. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Well, thank you for enlightening me about that piece of your trajectory. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, what? <laughs> for everyone who's listening, I have known Makita for like half my life at this point. <laughs> yes. Aww. Yes. Just about. We're getting Let's there. Let's talk about that. We're getting there. Really? Um, I feel like we should talk about her and then okay, we'll get there. That. We'll get there. It'll be part of the story. Okay, we'll get there. Yeah. So, Makita, when you were in Clinton, Maryland, you know, did, did you know that this was going to be your trajectory when you were attending the illustrious Oxen Hill yes, High illustrious. School that we are both alumni? Not another yes. one. <laughs> yes. Pretty Girl County, Woo! PG County. Yes. Represented <laughs> on this podcast. I mean, it was not by design, but but, hey, but, what can but it say? was. Something is happening up there. Okay. Yeah. That's all I'm going to, I'm going to keep saying that. These PG Because there's so many of y'all. Science and tech yes. high schools. There's something going it's something on there. for the black it's girls. something there. <laughs> um, but yeah, did you imagine this for yourself? I imagined none of this. Um, <laughs> absolutely none of it. Even going to Oxen Hill, the way that happened. So in middle school, I had a science and math middle school. Shout out to Gwen Park Middle. Hey, Gwen Park. Yes. So I went to Gwen Park, <laughs> and then my neighborhood school would have been Gwen Park High. But at the time, I had a teacher who said, you know, I think you should go into mechanical engineering. This was for a class where we did like engineering design type principles. We had to build things. We did all that in class. And I really enjoyed it. And so he said, I think this is what you should do. So from then on. Uh, in middle, this was middle school, school? That's so exciting. And I yeah. didn't know what engineering meant. Um, but I've said I'm going to be a mechanical <laughs> engineer from that point on. I went and told my parents. They just said, okay, uh, all right. Uh, well, well, we'll rock with it. <laughs> and so then I said, okay, I need to go to Oxon Hill because there's this science and tech program. At the time, we only had two high schools in the county. 
And the southern part of the county mm-hmm. was Oxon Hill. And the northern part of the county was Eleanor Roosevelt. So I said, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I kind of told my parents. Well, no, ass told, you know. And mm-hmm. But with my family, as long as you kind of lay out your plan and what you think is going on, <laughs> then they'll kind of rock with it. So they just said, okay. So Oxon Hill, engineering track the entire way through. And then going to FAM, um, whew, it, yeah, how does that happen? Uh, <laughs> like from from yeah. Maryland to Florida. Uh, so I wanted yeah. to get away. Um, <laughs> same. There, um, there was. I ended up still there, but there, same. I wanted right, to get away. Right. There was nothing wrong with Maryland per se. I just wanted to experience something different. That that's all it mm. really was, and I wanted to go to HBCU. So HBCUs with engineering programs, it's it's not a ton of them, but there's a, there's a yeah. selection, and so I said, okay, bam. I don't know what I don't know what said fam, but something said fam. So, I the first time I stepped foot on campus was for orientation. I I didn't even wow. do a visit. I I wow. sent my application in, got accepted, got my scholarship. I think in January, February, I had a full ride. The first time I went to campus was in the summer for orientation. Did oh you know goodness. anybody else though that no, went? it was it wow. was for my year. It was just me. But for your year, Kyla, wow. there were several yeah, Camille. people. Yeah, there were so many people. Camille, Lashanta. Several people. Shout out y'all. Several people. <laughs> there was a lot. And so yeah, when, my year, a lot when of people I got there, there, I was like, oh, mm. hi. And, and then, right. And, like, I know and there's a DC people. Metro Club and, you know, everybody's <laughs> oh, all this cool. kind of stuff. And so it just, it worked out. That's where I was supposed to be. So long enough that I stayed for a master. Um, <laughs> But I didn't envision any any of the possibilities of anything, even going to NC State, because I was going to originally stay and finish my PhD at FAM, but my advisor moved. And so, you know, the lab moved, <laughs> but I could have stayed, oh. um, but it just didn't make sense. And so I moved to Raleigh, too. I'd never been to Raleigh. The first time I went to Raleigh was I was moving <laughs> into my apartment. My wow. my yeah. parents. Yeah. Or, hold on, we need to have a pause because <laughs> you're just like going this is not normal. Unseen. This is not normal. All these places, <laughs> but it, it's really this is Makita though. Like she likes she she just likes to do stuff. Like, yeah. like it's this just is what like, I'm gonna do. I made up my mind. I'm doing it. Yes, my my mom wow. and my sister found my apartment because that summer wow. I was interning at GE Global Research in, in upstate New York. So I made an Excel sheet because engineer uh, with the with yeah. the requirements that I had with the apartments <laughs> that I thought, you know, made the most sense based on my budget. Mm-hmm. And I sent it to yeah. them. And so they went and visited the apartments on my behalf to go look. And oh, then wow. they said, we think you should stay here because they know me. <laughs> and they yeah. were right. And so, yes. Mm-hmm. So the first time and then my parents had to meet the movers to move my stuff in to Raleigh. So I literally, the first time I went to Raleigh was me going into my new apartment with my stuff there. That's fancy. With all your stuff set I up already. And your stuff I coordinated there. it. I coordinated all of it, but I physically was not there. <laughs> with your spreadsheet, yes, of course. Spreadsheet. So I have like a meta question. Like you knew at such a young age that you wanted to be a mechanical engineer. And that's not something people are used to black women just declaring. Mm-hmm. So like at different stages of your journey, did you have people that like tried to discourage you either, you know, in high school, probably not high school, but I think it was the best, but uh, I'm just saying, you know, (laughs) but like a different space, like were there people who tried to talk you out of doing this or like looked at you funny because of it? Um, No. And I think that's the blessing and it speaks to where we're from because mm-hmm. at, you know like you said oxygen was the best but no seriously because you see a lot of people <laughs> that look like you succeeding at high levels they're very intelligent mm-hmm. and are very headstrong they, they know what they want and there's no one really to say no and my parents and I mean, not just my parents my family is very supportive in that they know once i say something i'm not just saying it to say it <laughs> They, right. they they may say, okay, maybe you should think about it. I'm like, no, I thought about it. <laughs> right. I thought, like you're getting the final I thought, I, Yeah, I've already <laughs> processed it, and that's kind of what I want to do. What I will say when I wanted to quit, because during undergrad, I wanted to quit. 
in kind of like in mm. junior year, I think. But you're so far along, it's like, come on now. You can't be doing that. What, yeah. what made you want to quit? All the major courses that are back to back, all the two. So it's, oh. it's like you're in everything. And it's like it's your junior is the hardest one. And so there's like no break. Thank goodness for my cohort. But I remember calling my mom saying, yeah, I don't know about this engineering thing. Ah. And she was like, you remember that list you made? Right. The A to Z <laughs> point one B? Well, she yeah. was like, well, and I was crying too. And she was like, so then what are you going to do? Like that, that her thing mm -hmm. was like, so if you don't do this, then what are you going to do? Next? And I really had no answer. I just knew, <laughs> I just knew that I didn't want to do, I, I don't want to do, do this. I don't want to do this. Um, but what got you to that point? Um, so at the time, so for those that aren't aware, the in, the College of Engineering is hi a hybrid. So it's FAMU and it's Florida State. So both, we're all in the same building. Your your core classes like, you know, calculus and chemistry and all that kind of stuff, you do on your, your main campuses. But when it comes to any engineering type course, that is uh, in the College of Engineering. And so there was a cohort of us that came in at the same time. So we were tracked. And so we went through all our classes together. From FAMU. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we all, we studied together, we partied together, we hung out. We did everything together for the most part. Community. It was a community. <laughs> and so I'm thankful because if I didn't understand something, somebody in the community understood it and could like break it mm -hmm. down for the, for the team. <laughs> <laughs> break, break, it, break it down for everybody and so mm -hmm. that really helped get me through the fact that my mom was like so what are you going to do and you have one year left on your scholarship because I had to get through all this in four mm. years I couldn't do five mm. I didn't have a five option it was four for me so it was really and condensed it was four and at the time most people were doing five. right and most five. people were yeah. doing five and so I was just like I am super stressed and you know therapy the way we talk about it now was not the way it was then so yeah, it wasn't mm -hmm. like oh i just need to go talk to some no there i wasn't really thinking that way even though that would have helped but um i mean i got through it I, 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 obviously but <laughs> obviously but, um, yeah. it was i always tell people now yeah go ahead and do that five go ahead yeah. go ahead and do the five don't 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 try to do you don't, you, you don't, don't have to do it. Don't, don't do it. You don't. don't. Do it. I just, I, I think it's really telling that you really contemplated leaving because you knew from like forever that this is what you wanted to do. I feel like a lot of us get to that point where it's like, I'm doing this and I know that this is what I want, but it gets hard. Like, it's not yeah. like, I don't know anybody who's just been like, yeah, my trajectory has just been easy the I whole took way. took the classes and did the yeah. things and this happened and nobody bothered me. Like, and people just offered me all these wonderful opportunities right. and I just took them. And, <laughs> you know, like, that's not the real world, right? And people like to say, like, college is not the real world, but, like, y'all. It's a microchasm it, of the real right. world. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a mini version of chaos. Yes. Which is the real world. <laughs> Micro chaos. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. Micro chaos. Yeah. We need to put that on t-shirt. Okay. Yes. I'm not wearing a shirt talking about I'm micro chaos. <laughs> yes. Get some words. No, no. Words mean things. No, we have to explain yeah. it. Like, yes. we'll get it out of right. here. Yeah. Some, something to that effect. We'll figure we'll it play out. Around with Marketing them. team. Are y'all listening? Cool. Right. Product it's Alana it. and Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> I just started working good, like two and a half years ago. Can y'all chill? Yes. Ch can I? Right. Can I get a new car? So I'm still driving the no, same car. No, they don't car. do that. Oh wow. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump us back. If into my this. Celica was still going, I would be in the same. Kyla. Yeah. Okay. R.I.P. Angelica the Celica. R.I.P. <laughs> Gracie. <laughs> she ain't here shaking and stuff. Wait one second though. I do hear like. Air okay, you hear something? that too. From yeah. Okay, let's see. Does somebody have like a fan or something no. on? Mm -mm. There's oh, an or a computer flying. fan. My computer is like, like it's like a lower, like a little. They can edit that out. Everybody edit. Oh no no no! Allison might be tired. But just mute yourselves. Really, tell me if you hear it now. If it's me. All right. Somebody else mute.
Oh, it's you, Makita. I don't know what to change. Hmm. I don't know what would be making that noise. And now it just is gone. I don't hear okay. it anymore now. So oh, it's no, me. No. It oh, this is button, I think. Okay, maybe Which not. Button? It's like this green light is come. It comes in and then it goes off. Yeah, whenever you talk, it lights up. Oh, okay, got it. Never mind. But that shouldn't be it. But you muted Jeremy and we didn't. Or maybe y'all did something. Oh, okay, hold on. I don't know. Again? Yeah. No, no, it's, it's me not then. you. It's me. I could push my computer further away. Well, hit your mute just to double check. This podcast might be weird. Yeah, something over yeah. there, Jeremy. Okay. Um, it's like white noise and it's yeah. very low. I can try to filter it out. It could be my computer. It sounds hot. Oh, it's not plugged in. Oh, that's oh, okay. Got it. Let me give it some power. It's like help, help me, <laughs> help. I'm just yeah, gonna delete yeah, this me. record, just not I would say keep it. Oh. oh yeah, we we don't need to keep this. I was telling Bikita, it was like a lot of our pre All right, so one of the things let me start over because I jumped in really quickly. One of the things that I think we should highlight is um like the experience at FAM is just so different in the College of Engineering, right? Like a lot of people say, I don't want to go to an HBCU because it's not representative of what it's actually like in society. But at FAM, because you have that partnership with uh, FSU, you really get the best of both worlds. You get to kind of be in your environment where you're surrounded by community and people who look like you, right? But then you also kind of go to classes and get integrated into what engineering is probably going to feel like in the real world. So was, was that something that you thought about before you decided to go to FAM? Or were you just like, I'm just going to FAM? Y'all know at this point, I just do stuff. Makita. <laughs> <laughs> just be doing stuff. She it, started laughing before I finished the sentence. <laughs> I, it never, it, it was never a thought that it didn't cross my mind. Um, I was more concerned about having an HBCU experience. I just, mm. I, a different world had a hold on me, but my sister, mm. oh, my sister went to Howard. And okay. so I, that's, I just knew that's what I wanted to do. It just so mm. happened that that's how the college of engineering was set up. Um, the real world, I think at that point, the real world didn't dawn on me. It, it, mm -hmm. it didn't dawn on me what that would necessarily be like. Um, I, I, I think the first experience I even had with the real world was like an internship. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of where you kind of see like what, what a work environment's like. Right. But when, when you're down at FAM, you know, you have everything HBC related. When I go to Contra Engineering, because of where it's located, it's located at what, um, it's, it's a neutral distance um <laughs> between <laughs> fam and, and florida state uh but there are other florida state things around there at this mm -hmm. time uh but the the idea is that we're now in this building um the colors are neutral so the colors are like i think our colors are blue and white wow um, and they've since started um of own college engineering type homecoming so it's a, wow. it's a like a joint one um and so i haven't Should we get invited i haven't been yet to the <laughs> joint one um Cause you be going to homecoming, child. I do, I do go to homecoming. I'm debating this year. I'm debating. I'm getting. I'm getting peer pressure. I'm getting. Well, peer let pressure. us know if you go. We'll come up the road. Yes. I, yes. I, I need to look for an Airbnb or something. Just to. We'll see. Cause I'm just like guys. Cause my birthday's the next yeah. weekend. So mm -hmm. it's always. I don't want to celebrate hard, my birthday. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's a good yeah. time, but you know. And so. Um, and so then when we're on, when we were on campus, it really was just like, everyone's here. <laughs> everyone's yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And, but the funny thing is, uh, I think it's a book called Why Are the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria? Yeah, yeah. Beverly Tatum from Spelman. And, yes. And so that's kind of how it was a little bit, but then also you had Nesby. So at the time, Ooh. I didn't really do Nesby undergrad. My, yeah. my involvement mm. was, was not that high because I was on dance team. I was in other orgs. 
So I was doing a lot of things. And, she was living a life, And I y'all. just didn't have, I didn't have the bandwidth to do it all. And so, and then when. Because yeah, you was doing dance team. I read. You was yes. the captain yes. of the girl. She was in well, charge no, of the girl. I was president. I wasn't dance president, captain. Sorry. I wasn't dance was captain. I mean, I could dance, but I wasn't dance captain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wasn't that one. I wasn't well, what, there. What did people think about a dancing engineer? Because we have someone else coming up who was also a dancing engineer. So what, Listen, what, um, if you got it, you got it. That's I, what I love. I, I mean, even in Oxford. Hill, I was on the majorette team, mm-hmm. so I was I was captain of that. So I've always been dancing. I think we both went to France. Did we both go to France? Yeah. No, no, no. I didn't go. You to didn't France. go to France. Okay. I wish I did. Oh, what are we talking about here? It's a it's a dance studio not too okay. far from my high school. But but so that it's always been a part of my life, and so me too. And then yes. all of us, we all had different disciplines, but I was the only engineer. <laughs> Yeah, I was the only one. But my senior year of high school, I was captain of our like color guard in my high school. In charge of the girls. In charge of the girls. In charge of the girls. I have all my little outfits. In the words of my friend Trent, he was like, "I could tell you was in charge charge of the the girls." girls. I'm like, (laughs) yes, yes, yes. That was me. (laughs) Yes, that was me. But um, with Nesby at the time, we had a Nesby office. It's since mm-hmm. changed the structure, um, but it was a place where it was kind of centrally located. So whenever all classes got out, people just came there. You just congregated. Mm-hmm. So even though I wasn't really at Nesby, I found myself there mm-hmm. um, <laughs> consistently. When the black people congregate. Oh, yes. I had a question. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the students at FSU, mm-hmm. they took their initial classes at FSU then. Right. And then they went. So yeah. there are black people that go to FSU. Yes. And, and they correct. were, yes. And major in engineering. Yes, mm-hmm. correct. So y'all had like the FSU black people and the FAMU black people. Yes. And that's how the FSU FAMU or FAMU, FAMU FSU. Who, that's sorry. Cha- yeah. That's the chapter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's really yeah. cool. Yes. The joint, that's really cool. Yes. The joint chapter. So yeah. Our, <laughs> we, <laughs> we had shirts that had both mascots and like just all this wow. kind of stuff and joint stuff. <laughs> But, but yeah, so we were all just there. <laughs> mm. We're all just there together. And so we would hang out together a lot. Our engineering parties were notorious. <laughs> I believe um, it. Because engineers got a lot to relieve. It's like, had look, I am. Parties. No- she said notorious. <laughs> notorious. So everyone wanted to know, when's the next party? Uh, wow. but, but, yeah. And so it was, you had the, the real world experience because, you know, sometimes you have to. Just like in the real world, uh, in school, we had to let people know what was what. <laughs> let them know, child. They didn't under- what, did, what were the professors like in that <clears throat> program? Did they like? Did they know who was from FAM, who was from FSU? Did they treat you differently? Was that something that was even a thing? I mean, they would know just because of how we had to register for everything. Oh, okay. Um, but we weren't necessarily treated differently. Um, not that, not That's that I, important. not that I could see it, it was, it was really, we're all here and we're all together. And then also I learned this later, but depend some, some faculty are hired under either a FAMU line or an FSU line. So it, mm-hmm. de- it depends. So you can't differentiate. Yeah. Necessarily. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, cause it, it influences other things. So it wouldn't be, it really, I mean, it's not ethical also, but you know, mm-hmm. whatever biases to don't tend That's to a whole other story they don't right. tend to work care about ethics but for biases but you know <laughs> it, it didn't feel it doesn't necessarily feel that way um i had i had a few issues and my mom reminded me of that but that happened on family's <laughs> campus that, oh, that didn't mm. happen at the college of engineering speak on it no let's think, not well no well, it's, <laughs> it's, don't it's, speak, it's not, it's not a, a it's not a, it's not a bad and, one oh, it's, okay i good. mean well I, it, yeah so <laughs> I was in a, I had a lab for one mm-hmm. of my, for one of my courses and the, the structure of the lab course was you have your, your lab team, everyone had to turn in a lab report, but because you were all a team, the, it was the same lab report. Mm-hmm. So it was literally changing the name, which was like a waste of paper and time. Now that I think about yeah. it, but whatever, that's how it, that's how it was structured. Okay, fine. So in my particular group, I was the only only woman, of course, as it tends to be a lot. And so um, we were turning everything in, and then, you know, grades are starting to come out, or we, we're starting to get a sense of what our grade will look like, our final grade. Now, my grade was lower than my teammates. 
And I didn't understand why, because it's the same report. It's the same report. Like that, right. that makes no sense. Right. And, um, and so I think I either, I can't remember which I did first. I, I talked to the, the professor about it and he was kind of, and I, and I, when I talked to him though, because engineer, I brought my papers mm-hmm. and my teammates, of course, because I need, you know, I have the evidence. Right. And and he couldn't really give me a straight answer, but he he wasn't really trying to budge. And I remember venting to my mom about it. I was just venting to her, just telling her, I did not tell her to do this. She called to the department, that particular department. Some kind of way she got in touch with the department chair or who, whatever she needed to do. Next thing I know, I'm flying. I think I was flying back here for a holiday, and I got a, a voicemail saying, "Your grade is now this." Wow. Because I, I she, my mother told me to take all the paperwork and drop it off at the at the department. Documentation. And, and she was like, that, "So my mom's really big on documentation. She's the same way with my sister. It saved my sister sometimes in Howard. It saved me." <laughs> So now I'm a hoarder of papers because of documentation. <laughs> and that's how it should be. But anyways, continue. But yeah, so my grade ended up being corrected to the to, to the right grade. And I couldn't think about why. The only thing that stood out that could have been was because I was a woman. Because we were all black. There was nothing else that was different. It, it, it's so weird. And it had that to be because weird. I was a woman. Because he's like, oh, she couldn't have possibly contributed to this paper. That's this really way. frustrating. Yeah, and then half the time they all know, like, wouldn't be the people keeping the group together. Like, look, okay, let's do this. This is what we go do. But <laughs> they've already predetermined yes. in their head what your contribution was without even being in the room. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But th- thankfully, that was the only crazy incident I had that, like, that happened that way. There was another yeah, one where I went off in class one time, but <laughs> I mean, we don't, I, I we don't have to tell that. Justified. We don't have to tell that story, but just, just, mm. just listen. I'm going to say what's right and what's right and what's wrong is what's wrong. I will do yeah. that. I won't let it. I just don't like when people ask me how I'm feeling because I'm gonna tell you, and right? And you that, not be prepared for the answers to tell. You may not be, so don't ask me that question because I <laughs> I like to tell the truth. Um, yeah, and the reason but, I actually like to expound is because people feel like sometimes going to as a black person going to an HBCU that now you are all free from all the isms mm-hmm. of the world. No. But we can't negate, you know, all of the intersectional identities that we have and how those are still at play even at an HBCU where you think that oh, I'm, I'm yes, you're safe in lots of aspects, oh, yeah. but you know there's still some stuff that happens. Right. I just didn't. I I've heard a lot of positive and negative things and i just didn't want it to be like super negative like because kyla and i our perspective is from being at pwis Mm -hmm. like our whole trajectory so that's your story and you are welcome to share it i just Mm -hmm. (laughs) not gonna interject my personal feelings about the things Um, the 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 department chair made it right you know what i'm talking about yes anyways um so i i love that you had like a really good experience. And I, I'm surprised to hear that you weren't super involved in Nesby because around this time is when we met. So like, as you were kind of finishing and moving into your master's program, yeah. um, I was on the region three board for Nesby mm-hmm. and transitioning out of my position and Makita just came along in the board after me and that's how we became friends which is not unusual in Nesby like usually people who have like succeeding uh leadership groups like they communicate but we were in totally like different spaces in some ways because we weren't Um, even in the same zone yeah I was programs and I was comms (laughs) So we didn't have any reason to talk. It was just like gravitational pull. Because I was wondering that because I was like, okay, for some reason I was like, okay, Makita went to school in Florida. Okay, obviously there's a UF connect. Oh, there's no UF connection. What Mm -mm. what is it? Yeah. Yeah. It was (laughs) a chance meeting at a regional leadership event. And I was like, 
this is this is my family. I like this. <laughs> oh my gosh! And I like I'm not gonna cry this morning. I am not okay. gonna cry this okay, morning. Don't. But I, I feel like saying it is when make we it happen. no when we get there. I'm gonna share like I would not be here if it weren't for Makita. So, anyways, we'll get there. Um, wow. But yeah, That's we a lot, met. Jeremy. I know we met, and I was just like, this girl just has levels of energy. And I thought she was younger than me because her she was just she. I mean, y'all can hear it. Like she is full of life and vibrant and like and just she does super all fun. kinds of active activities. I read somewhere she'll take any gym class at yeah. any gym. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's real. It's real. It's real. Life. Um so yeah, how was your experience like being on the Nesby Regional Leadership Board, like executive board? Okay. So <laughs> I st- I'm going to take a step back. So the, yeah. the, the way I even got there, I was in grad school. Uh, I wanted to become more involved with Nesby. Uh, I started going to a few meetings and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm a service person. So I do a lot of service work regardless of what it pertains to. But my judge tends to be diversity in STEM, <laughs> uh, math concepts for kids, anything like that. I'm probably gonna, you know, gravitate towards it. Uh, so at the time, I think was Gerald on your board. Maybe, oh, maybe no, not. No. It not it. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, it was recommended, saying, "Hey, I think you would be good for this position because that's how you get pulled into stuff in Nesby. I think you'd be good for that." And I said, mm-hmm. "Okay." And at the time, it was PR chair, which I I would have been good for that, and I was good. Public for it. relations, I'm yeah, good for child, public that's relations. you. And so I said, okay. So my first position in Nesby was on the regional board. I didn't do any chapter leadership. That was my first. Mm. That was my first position. Wow. And so thoroughly enjoyed it. Learned how to write press releases because well, I'm an engineer. Why am I writing a press release? I would never. <laughs> also, I'm an engineer. Why am I writing? Is some people's question. <laughs> I mean, well, now I write so much at work. So I was gonna say, don't believe don't that. Don't believe that. Right. You're gonna it's, write. It's a myth. Ooh, it's, it's a myth. It's a but... myth. Some people believe that I'm an engineer. I don't have to write. Don't believe that. Don't believe the hype, man. Uh, And so got to that. And then you get introduced to the, these transition meetings, all these different meetings, all these different conferences, what it's like on the back end. And I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed meeting members. I enjoyed, you know, just seeing things. And so I kind of kept doing it. I I would take breaks because it can be involved. And, you know, when you're trying to finish, Mm -hmm. when you're trying to get out of school, it's like, okay, school is the real priority here. This is stuff. This is cool. But, you know, this is the priority. And so I took a break. Then I got pulled back in for um, hosting the National Leadership Conference, which happens in June, which is um, all the regional boards and the national boards. Everyone comes together for training every year. And help with that for I think I did two serves on the committee and then I became the chairperson to help with that and then I became in a lie chair um, and I did two terms of that and that was during my PhD program you are glossing Mm -hmm. over a whole lot of expertise that's a lot of work but so I've I've done I've I've done a lot of leadership development a lot of leadership training Um, I understand curriculum development for that setting up uh, how to onboard people. I'm, I'm really good at that and making sure that people have the skills they need to do what they need to do. Some of that I even do at my current job because they know I can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've, I've been pulled to do that. But um, I think I'm thankful for Nesby because I was able to talk to companies, you know, work with company reps, understand understanding budgets and planning and uh, how to plan a conference. Mm-hmm. That yeah. I can plan at this point. I can plan. I can plan any event. I, I'm 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 a hundred percent positive that I can yep. plan anything. So when I go to events and they're janky, I'm a little bit it's like judgy. I'm a little judgy. <laughs> I am a little judgy. Because I mean, if that's your profession, then you know, it's... like not even your profession. If that's something that you've studied extensively, like you notice all the things. Right. I know. I notice all the little things or things that could have gone better, or maybe we should do it this way, or why didn't they think about that? But I try to not do that and live in the moment and all that kind of thing. Because you know, <laughs> if you're if you're not watching, she just gave a whole eye roll. <laughs> they say we should just live in the moment, so I try, I try to stay in the moment. <laughs> as much as I can uh but yeah it's hard that's a hard thing to do um yeah I I just love that like 
I think what's great about Nesby is you do form relationships with people, um, people who are usually like-minded and like for us, like I can't, it's, it doesn't make sense, right? That we kind of connected and have maintained our friendship at a distance. Like yes. we've never lived in the same place, never. but we've always been connected and like, I'm probably on the terrible side of this, which is probably odd to people who are listening who know me. Makita has come to visit me so many times. Aww, but I have n- I have never gone to her. So um, I'm going to make that happen. I don't even take it personally. I'm in my own world sometimes. I'm just like, <laughs> you know, whenever you come, you come. You don't, you don't. That's fine. No love lost. I I'm, I'm here. She be in Florida. I'm here. I feel I feel like real friendship is not tit for tat. Like I did this, you should do that. It's like I'm aware of everybody's life situation, and we see each other at the points that work for us, yes. and we're not going to dictate, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. You have a whole family. Like, right. I know. You have a whole person you are in charge of. <laughs> And also Amara. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, child, don't get in trouble now. Ooh, Chile. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in charge of me. That's literally it. Yeah, and he, you know, he's been here for most of the time. So, yeah, that's a whole other story yeah. for another day. <laughs> Um, if y'all are okay with keeping rolling, we can keep I can rolling. Pee. Okay, I'll okay, stop. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now I have to share all of my emotions. <laughs> so be prepared, Makita. It's a safe space. Okay. Um, so, you know, a few years pass by and I decide I'm going to grad school and I'm in like year three, I want to say year three, going on year four of my program. And I was struggling, y'all. Like, I was a hot mess. Like, I was at the point where it was like, the department told me, go home and think about what you want to do with your life. Um, And they gave me like a week off to think through my emotions and problems and things, which I didn't feel like I had any, but apparently I did. And... I got like to the point where I just decided to post something on Facebook because I was going through it and Makita like read it and sent me a text message and was like, what's going on? I'm calling you. And when I picked up the phone, she was like, you're going to tell me exactly what's going on and we're not getting off the phone until I know everything. And so like two and a half hours later. I'm like crying, like a hot mess. I tell her all the drama, which I will save, spare y'all uh, the details of, but she's just like, you need to go to therapy. Like you need to go to counseling. You need to talk to somebody because like I was where you were and you are not okay. And this is gonna require a lot of work, but I'm gonna be here for you every step of the way. And I, I don't know where, I, I, I have no idea where I would be today if it had not been for that phone call because I was really depressed, like clinically depressed, depressed, and I had no idea. And I then learned that I was like a high functioning depressed person. So I was still accomplishing goals and you know, achieving things, doing well in my classes, showing up to events, like putting on a brave face, you know, planning my life out. And no one, no one knew. But Makita saw it from a distance through social media and said, I have to reach out and I have to help her. And I, 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 to this day, like whenever somebody asks me, like, what was like, how did you make it through like the really hard times? Cause I do tell my story a lot. How did you make it through? I always tell them it was you no. and it was God Wow. because I, I literally had no idea what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this is why it's important to have community and have different people in your life because you never know, like, 
what one small, seemingly small thing could trigger for someone else to support you and help you. Um, so I, I thank you a thousand times. I know I've told you how important you are to me, but I feel like everyone needs to know like how important you are to me and like what you've, what you've done. So I love you. I love you, you too, JK. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it took everything in me not to cry. <laughs> you, you did but I so think well. It's also important, too, the fact that the stigma has been removed from therapy because a lot of people wouldn't receive that in the correct energy that it was given. Like, if somebody's like, oh, I'm struggling, oh, go to therapy. Oh, you think I'm crazy? You know, that's always <laughs> the, the reaction. But I like the fact that, you know, someone that you know and you trust that's been where you've been, the fact that not only community, but trust within that community mm -hmm. can lead to such a breakthrough. Well, she was just like further along in the PhD process than I was. And I trust her. Like I trust her I, I, more than I trust like some people in my family, like to give me <laughs> advice on like how to navigate these systems and things. Cause mm -hmm. it's not intuitive. It's, there's no like, there's no like rule book. There's no spreadsheet I could follow. There's no, and as an engineer, like I'm, let me just check this box and let me just check that box. And sometimes how to check that box, there's nothing there and there's nothing there. There's no way to get from point A to B. Right, right. No, and I think, so at that point, I might've been on my last year or my, the last semester, I can't remember, but well, I ended up getting a grant to, to write my dissertation. So I didn't necessarily have to work in a lab or anything like that. It, it covered it. But one of the stipulations of the grant, we had to do group therapy, essentially. So the, it, was a, it was a cohort of us that, that got this grant. So once a week, we had to go to like a counseling center and talk to you know, like a person so we were all in group talking about our experiences and even how it made me feel when i left like it was just like a, a weight and it, it was good to see i'm not the only one experiencing certain things or feeling certain things because you're right there's no there's really no road map there's kind of it's, it's like these little marks but that the in between of connecting those little boxes that could look like a DKG <laughs> read at, readout. Right. Like what? <laughs> We're all over the place. Yeah. So, so having that is very important. And then, I mean, you whether there was group or not, there was somebody external that you needed to speak to because I'm. I've had like I haven't been diagnosed with depression, but the weight of things and feeling that and still pushing and, and I have to recognize when I have to stop because even though I'm doing all these things, I'm not well. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not well, this is all, this, all this is not going to be well. Right. None of this is happening. <laughs> so we need to, it's something we need to fix. And when I saw your post, I was like, I already know what this is. Let me send this text <laughs> because this is what, what we not going to do today. Right. You, you were not no. No, we're going to, we're going to fix whatever this, we're going to figure it out and whatever to make sure that you're good because I love you too much. And I was like, nah, we're, we're, we're not, we're not doing this. And I don't think that like, I'll, I'll say it like this. Like, I don't think that I was even aware of what I was saying and how like it might be perceived. I was just done. Like, I just made the comment, like, this is some nonsense and like, I just can't. But in talking to you, it helped me realize like, nothing I'm doing is working. Like me and Jesus, we're cool. We talk every day, <laughs> but these prayers, I can see them being answered, but it's not helping me feel any better. Mm -hmm. Like I feel miserable. Like I feel heavy. I feel like I don't want to get up and take a shower. Like, I want to brush my teeth, which is very strange because I like clean teeth. Like, <laughs> I don't want to, like, I'm not interested in food and y'all know how I feel about food, right? Oh, but like, yes. I wasn't being honest with myself about like those feelings and 
But nobody, nobody saw it. Like they could see I was fighting. Like I was, I was trying, I was striving, but I was struggling is what it was. And also, like you said, like on the outside, you were still achieving things. Yeah. So people feel like, oh, from yeah, the outside she's looking fine. in, everything looks good, you know? And that's like, and I don't mean to be like really, really negative, but like, that's how people that we see who are very successful end up choosing, I don't want to be here anymore. It's not that they don't value the people around them and what's going on. Like I knew I was loved and supported and like I knew that I was blessed to even be where I was, but I felt awful. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll share this, like even like I went to counseling first and in my counseling sessions, my counselor was like, I think you would benefit from talking to a psychiatrist. Just talk to her and hear what she has to say. I want you to hear what she has to say. And that lady was supposed to talk to me for 30 minutes and it ended up being an hour and a half wow. through her lunch time. Wow. <laughs> and she told me like, you're really fascinating, which I'm like, duh, no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you, have but you but duh, me? but yes. also duh. Yeah. <laughs> but she was like, I, I don't see this a lot where you have someone who's high functioning and doing all the things and achieving stuff and they are in a very dark place like it's it's not common right. but it is common enough in in high, higher education and it's hard to see the signs of it yeah mm -hmm. um so she's like you you are clinically depressed and if you were my patient i would put you on six months of medication and i would you know, maybe in six months, evaluate whether the medication is working and change it because your situation isn't changing. So likely you would still be depressed. Mm. But since you are high achieving and you are good at meeting milestones and, you know, making, making progress towards things, I think you can manage this on your own. So I'm going to give you a choice. Will you change? your behaviors to support your mental health or do you want to take some chemically altering medication that may change you forever and I was like well obviously I want to try you know I want to at least <laughs> right, give myself right, a chance right. to right. change and we made a plan which is what I'm all about and I adhered to that plan religiously and ultimately changed how I felt about myself, how I thought about the situation, mm -hmm. you know, how I was eating, the things that I was doing that brought me joy. Like I really invested in me and stopped caring so much about external factors. Mm -hmm. And that's what, sh like that shift in mindset is what helped me be successful and get through my program. Because honestly, like, I needed a change yeah. and none of that would have happened if Makita wouldn't have been like, Oh no, uh, <laughs> let me she send a text message right now. Be like, we need to talk. <laughs> um, yeah. And I use those strategies to this day. So I, I think it's important to one, you know, tell people where you're at. Mm -hmm. I wasn't talking about my emotions and how I felt about things and girl, nobody needs to hear that. Like that's where my brain was at. Like nobody needs mm -hmm. to understand that. So I overshare now, um, <laughs> like this podcast episode. Two, um, eating healthy, exercising became things that I had to do. Like mm -hmm. being going outside and taking a walk. Yep. yep. Just to like, I was in a basement, y'all. I was living in a closet mm -hmm. doing my research. So I walked every day. I would go outside and walk in a circle. When I got stressed out about something that happened in the lab, I would go outside and just walk outside and look at the trees and try to forget what I was thinking about that upset me. Mm -hmm. um, going to church and being invested in um, my faith and the relationship that I have in, in, in the church setting and having people hold me accountable for the things that I said. So all of that and continuing to go to counseling, all of that changed me. And now I feel like I could, I could take over the world. So 
And she doing if it's I, hard. I, I know. <laughs> if it's hard, there is a way. But you know, we don't have to sacrifice us for a job or something that we're doing. Yeah. Right. I agree. I agree. Yeah. One thing someone uh, told me was, you know, there's lots of things that happen as you're in your job. Things are so stressful. Your body reacts to stress in all these different mm-hmm. ways. Let's say something unfortunate happens and you're no longer with us. Someone told me they would post your job, you know, replacements. You know, the posting for your job would be up before your obituary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that is something where I'm like, it, you're more so, and not to say, oh, your job doesn't value you, but you cannot let what you do dictate your life. You cannot let it impact your health, your mental health, your well-being. You have to prioritize yourself. And oftentimes we're taught not to be selfish. Mm-hmm. And sometimes like be putting yourself first feels selfish, but it's, it's, it's not. It's not. It's it's if not, there's not. no you, there's, there's nothing. It doesn't matter. And and that's what I had to understand. <laughs> like, you know, I for me the biggest thing was internalizing other people's beliefs about me um, mm-hmm. as truth. Mm-hmm. And I had to come to the realization that nobody gets to define Jeremy but Jeremy Kobe. and God. Okay, Kobe. so that's it. <laughs> that's it. The the piece about your health, um, and if, if you follow me on social media, you know I'm very active. Um, yes, yes, I, you I, are. I live a healthy lifestyle for the most. I mean, it's balanced, whatever. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that started in grad school because when I was starting studying for my calls the first time, I stressed myself out to the point where I got Bell's palsy. So the right side oh my of my goodness. face was paralyzed. I, wow. I just woke up one morning and it felt weird. And I was like, what is going on? And I ended up, I went to the doctor. They allegedly didn't know. They just wanted to get me out of the office, like get my copay. So, but it didn't go away. And so I went to the emergency room and then they told me that's what it was. And it kind of just had to go away on its own. But I was stressing myself out that much with prepping for that test. Mm-hmm. Which I, I mean, I failed it. Mm-hmm. I don't even know where I failed, but I failed it the first time. Um, <laughs> but uh-huh. when that happened, from there, I got to the point where I tell people now, focus on your health, focus on mm-hmm. your body, whatever that thing is, whatever it is, it will always be there. It will come back around if it's supposed to happen, whatever. But if something happens to you, all of this is for naught. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So any, if I'm feeling stressed or if there's things going on and I get invited out to, I'm tired or I've, I've had a crazy week. I, <laughs> I need a nap or I need to sit on my couch and watch mindless TV. I, I, I can't run around and do all the things because I'm super tired, but I used to be someone who tried to do everything. I can't, I, I literally can't. cannot do it all. We can't. <laughs> so, mm. And the no. people, who, people who matter, they will understand. And yeah. the people who, who don't understand, they do not matter. Mm-hmm. So if people All don't want you for your presence, like, okay, but if I tell you right now, I do not have the bandwidth and you have an issue with it, guess what? We have an issue now because you don't care about me and my well-being. Right. Just, mm-hmm. no, mm, no. Viva la help! <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> So you definitely did a lot just in terms of academically, in terms of mentoring, but how was that transition from academia into your life as a postdoc? Okay. So there was a two year gap <laughs> Oh yeah. between graduating and actually getting my first postdoc. So there was a lot of application cycles, um, and I need. I wanted to transition my research area, so I knew postdoc was the next step. In the midst of that, that whole thing about self care, yeah, just just to say, I had to do a lot of that, and it was very tough mentally. Um, so I ended up getting the the California Alliance Postdoctoral Fellowship. So that took me to UCLA. Very prestigious, might I add. <laughs> Thank you. And I yes, I 
the way I moved again. Um, <laughs> so the it, listen, I just live on faith. So the rental market out there is different than anywhere else because you kind of need to be there in order to figure stuff out. And the way things move, they move really fast. So I'm thankful that I was able to reach out because of my Nesby network and I was able to live with one of our fellow sister docs, uh, Dr. Kim Cross, and I was on her couch. Aww. And so she's a graduate of UCLA. And so I was able, she helped me navigate things. And so I found out where I was supposed to go. So I did a uh, multi research there. So looking at using magnetic materials to convert heat to electricity. Mm. So I did that for a couple <laughs> years. I taught, go. I taught an intro class, um, and, uh, for our, uh, for the diversity office. So I taught a freshman of uh, their different random engineering stuff they needed to know. And then I ended up going to a Nesby conference and learning about Carbice Corporation and they just happened to get a phase two grant. I was not looking for a second postdoc at this time. Wait, what is phase two? Oh, sorry. Oh, so if you are a small business, um, you can apply to NSF for an S a small business innovation research grant, which is also known as SBIR. And so with that, um, the phase one money, I, I can't remember if it's just like 500k or something i can't remember what it is it's around there but phase two is like a million up and so what happened i heard about this uh, that uh asee fellowship before when i was just looking for fellowships and i know he had mentioned that they were trying to do these things and i said hey did you know about this postdoc that you could take advantage of you don't have to necessarily fund them they fund them they just come and you know work for you no. So he happened to look mm. on my LinkedIn, my, the stuff that I was doing, I'm, so my, comp, I, all my stuff is computational. I, at that point I hadn't done anything in the lab. So everything is coding, finite element analysis, yada, yada. And so he said, okay, I think you would actually be a good fit for us. Would you be interested? I was not looking at the time. And I said, okay, yeah, let's talk about this. So we talked about it. It was a good fit. So I was able to be a research engineer at a startup, but I'm also a postdoc. Um, <laughs> so I'm doing all these things and I'm at, I'm at Georgia Tech because we were literally sitting at Georgia, I was on the campus. And so I had to help. And when you say he, oh. we're talking about a black man. Yes, a black man. Oh, so, I didn't know we're talking about a black man. So Dr. Baracola. <laughs> oh. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So I was working, yes, yes. And so. You didn't know that? You didn't though? know? No. Her mouth is wide open. Yes. <laughs> I love him. Like, yes, he's, he's amazing. with the story. He's amazing. He is, a, he continue, is so amazing. Please. And it was one oh of the gosh. best experiences I've ever had. He gave me so much freedom. I grew so much. Um, just working in the space, I was able to then be, do test engineering. I'd never done that before. So I was able to go into the facility. I'm doing all these experiments and running things, but I'm actually helping with product development. So it, it, it was able to tie everything finally together and still mm -hmm. be a part of startup community. We went to to California. I was able to do venture capitalist meetings, um, meeting with customers, like things like that in person, working with customers. I did that in Atlanta too. And it helped me grow tremendously as an engineer, like tremendously. And so then when the, you know, the post, I did that for almost two years, no, for two years. And then it drove me, well, at the time, at the end, I was either going to go the faculty route, senior track faculty route, or mm -hmm. um, industry, well, not really industry, UARC. So I was looking at still, I still wanted to do something research related. And so, well, tenure track did not work out. God said that is not for you right now. Um, and I, try, I gave myself two cycles and I said, if nothing, then I got bills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. life moves on life moves on and so then i ended up um finding a i reached out to another friend and also also another oxen hill alum who actually worked there and, I, and he worked at apl and i said when how are you liking it you like your Was it Daryl? no brian do you know brian you, you wouldn't know brian brian's under you so we have two oxen hill folks that's at apl but continue we actually continue. we actually have four 
Cause oh, there's uh, four. Cynthia is another one. Broussard. Cynthia is there. Yes. <laughs> That's right. And so, yeah, so it's, I guess it's four of us then. Aww. But um, see, something's in the water, man. Okay? I told you. Yeah. Something in the water. Something in the water. But, um, but I asked him about his experience and how do they, you know, hire PhDs. And he said, yeah, just send me your CV. And some if you see some wrecks, let me know what they are. And so I was able to apply for, for whatever they were. And then the rest is history. And, yeah, so I ended up back in Maryland. I, I literally wow. went around the country. You really I, did. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I just I just went everywhere. But just, yeah. And I have stories for every place. So there's way too much. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> but I live life. I've lived a life. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and I, I, it's been a fun ride. Like, you talked about the two years in between. And I, I just remember, like, you were hustling Man. in those two years. Like... I, I admire you so much for, like, your commitment to, like, still not letting no's, like, be an end. Like, yeah. the door is closed. Because I think that's something we don't talk about often is, like, sometimes the job market is trash. And it's hard to get positions. Mm-hmm. Not just when you have a PhD, but period. Right. Right? Like, and you don't want to just settle for doing something just just cause to like be if doing you, it. Mm-hmm. yeah if you have yeah. an idea of like where you're trying to go and you know like i need these things to check some boxes for me to make that happen like you got to go after your dreams mm-hmm. so and here we are and here we are mm-hmm. here we are but man i i'm, I'm amazed at how things have how things happen I, it has to be nothing but god because a lot of things kind of fell out of the sky like even the way i found out about the the ucla postdoc Mm-hmm. I went on vacation, so yeah, I was I, the fact that I was even still able to do vacation. <laughs> now, let's hear the story because the, the fact that you went on vacation ended up with where a were we? We need to hear about that. Okay, so <laughs> I was I was in Miami, and so mm-hmm. this was like an annual trip that I was. I think this was maybe the third year or so at that time, and it was it's like a when the hotel that I stay at is very um it's like a five star. It's really really nice, and I'm just she bougie y'all. That's what she tried to not say. <laughs> Listen, it just happened that way, but because <laughs> my parents are not, uh, but, uh, and, and I was just like the life of ease. I don't like life is hard enough that I do not want to put extra hard things in place that do not have to be there. So I like a life of ease. I like a life of joy, um, positivity. If it's too much, if it's next, nah. I, I, I won't deal with it. So came back. Um, and, and at this point, I was checking email religiously because I needed to see, did it get accepted? Did I get rejected? I need to know where I stand and whatever it was. So get back home. I'm literally sitting in my bed. I'm in my parents' house because, um, you know, I wasn't working. In fact, I, I was working, but it wasn't, you know. You yeah, it's do not you... D.C. money where you can Ooh, just no. be out there in no, the No, you can't. You cannot do that in D.C. And so um, I'm, I was crying, and then I was praying, and I was like, God, this is not it. I don't know what you got going on, but we need to fix this. This cannot be. What are we doing? Right. Mm-hmm. Something told me, check my email. Check my email. And the professor reached out and said, um, I was contacted by our VP and um, – we have money for this fellowship. Are you still interested? I was like, am I? (laughs) Yes. Where's the contract? The contract now. (laughs) Um, But the crazy part was that email was sent while I was on my vacation, but I'd been checking my email and I did not see it. And I didn't get that much email, but randomly I didn't see it until I got back. Wow. And that's when I found out Mm, in the mist. So just, Maybe it was because God was like, if she finds out on this vacation, all the money's going to be spent and we need her to have a little <laughs> bit of coins. Oh, not. It, it wasn't going to be spent. It wasn't, really, it wasn't, well, much, also, it wasn't much to spend. <laughs> also, you need to have that conversation where it's like, what am I doing? Like that whole come to Jesus moment needed to happen. And it was mm-hmm. like, no, listen. I got you. Right. Yeah. And then so we got out to LA. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> 
She was in Miami, DC, LA, Atlanta, Baltimore now? Everywhere. No. I, no? We actually were okay. in Laurel. We're in Laurel. Laurel. Okay. We're in Laurel. But I live, I'm just still in, I live in Prince George's County. So. I mean, you, you can't leave home? PG County. I I'm just saying. I mean, it's really hard. PG County is also pretty big. Because <laughs> it, you're huge. in Florida. Because <laughs> I'm in Florida. <laughs> No, I said you can because you're in Florida oh. to Kyla because oh. she said you can't leave. You can't. You can't leave. But you it cannot. didn't leave her. Like, I mean, I can't. Oh, it exactly. definitely did not, did not leave her. It did not. <laughs> it definitely did clear. not. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, okay. What do you do with your research? Because we kind of, Kyla messed up the whole chemical compound oh, earlier today. Listen, yes, you. Just because the chemical compound was talking to tongues, so we oh. all messed it up. <laughs> So I don't actually don't do any of that now. Mm-hmm. I don't do any of okay. that now. At the heart of it, I'm a I'm a I'm a mechanical engineer that does mainly I'm a mainly thermal background, but I do structural too. So now I'm kind of balanced. And so, so when you say structural as a mechanical engineer, what does that mean? So stress. So if something is stressed too much, it will break. So I look mm-hmm. at different materials, what kind of loads they can handle based on whatever application we're trying to use it for and okay. and what that looks like and do an uh, analysis around that. But the application of that, it seems, is very broad. Like, it you can, can use that in a it, lot it of different It can go in a lot spaces. of things. So what I currently look at are flight systems. So mm-hmm. that could be rockets, that could be missiles, that could be a helicopter. Everything whatever. flying over our head. She is over here making sure it can fly over our head and not get stressed out. That, I need y'all to exactly. know. Exactly. And, and do and make sure we that things do what we need them to do <laughs> and, mm-hmm. when, mm-hmm. and the way we need them to do it. So I look at that kind of stuff and um, I use, uh, so all my stuff is, not all of it, but most of it is finite element analysis. So mm-hmm. Whatever. Which is a structural analysis program, right? But you use like well, coding. Well, thermal. Yeah, I use coding too. So I use both. So there could be commercial FBA software, but I have to go in on the back end and code in different things that I need. Or mm-hmm. if it's an in house code, we have our own languages and things that we use. So I have to learn those tools as well. Whoa. So and we develop our own things. So it's a it's a bunch of things. But all of my work then the. the vast majority of my work everything's been computational and i've had to code somewhere at some mm-hmm. point the entire time even though i'm a mechanical engineer yes but i do a lot of that and people and it, don't know that that like in mechanical engineering there's so much simulation because it is expensive to build things it's very mm-hmm. you know you have to take all those principles that, like literally one of the best students in my lab is a mechanical engineer because he can be like oh i know this language does that that language does that and he can just figure out what we need for the problem but when you go into mechanical engineering you don't think of oh yeah i'm gonna need to code well <laughs> and i think like a lot of people don't realize how ubiquitous it is right like mm-hmm. it's everywhere mm-hmm. i mean even in civil engineering we take finite element analysis courses we talk about how to visually represent things because you, you like you said you can't just build everything and test it out like yeah. i'm not going to build something that costs a million dollars to build <laughs> or to more test. and then break it like right. and just see like oh this is how it broke no i have to digitally represent that some yes. way um so i just when i first suggested that you be on the podcast kyla was like what why and then i told her what you were doing and she was like oh, oh yeah <laughs> because it is like yeah. something that we don't really talk about as often right right um, it's another and you're background. doing like yeah, you're, you're using material science mm-hmm. and you're using electrical engineering in some ways, computer yeah, engineering, yeah. software, hardware. Like, it's it is very multidisciplinary work. It's everything. So, it's, mm-hmm, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say that we, you get into it, you know, in the undergrad level and you think it's going to be one way, but I literally have to touch everything. And even if I don't know enough of it, there's, we have a whole team. And so, but I right. have to be able to communicate. Right. With the other members of my team that have that expertise to be able to say, okay, now I can take what you just said and put it into my analysis so that I understand what's going on. But I still have to be able to have that conversation with them and the, based on the things that I need and the things that they know. But we, we, we touch everything. I've, t- I've touched everything, <laughs> even chemical stuff. Even chemical. I was gonna say chemical. Even chemical. I was gonna say chemical, but I was like, yes. I, it depends. I was doing yeah. that when I was at the startup. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 
I was gonna ask, like, if in your like, do you get pushback from traditional traditional mechanical engineering folks who are just like, oh, you also focus on these other areas, so you're not a real mechanical engineer? No, because they wouldn't say that. If they were a real mechanical engineer, they would never say that. Okay, good. <laughs> because yeah. they would know. Like we literally have to talk to everybody. That you you couldn't you couldn't do what you do. There there's no way you could do what you do, and you don't, and you aren't able to have those conversations. You couldn't do it. No, that mm-hmm. makes sense because mechanical isn't like purely mechanical. Like you are making something that exists in some system that you need another expertise to understand. Yep. They any project. We have so much work going on right now because everybody needs us. <laughs> yeah. Literally everyone, every project needs us. And so it's kind of mm. like who can support, who can support. It's, it's a lot of that because we're in everything. I mean, work is good for y'all. <laughs> That's job security. Yes. But what that, what that means is like, you know, as a student, like if I'm someone who's in high school and I'm thinking like, I want to be a mechanical engineer, you have to ultimately be comfortable understanding the language of other disciplines and so that starts in those like biology and chemistry and physics courses because you're integrating all of those things together and if you get some computer science kudos to you too because you need it yeah and the whole why do i have to write thing you need to communicate and it's not even just communicate on people who speak the same language you're communicating with people who different concepts mean different things yes and what they do yes yes you, the writing ugh, so much writing i had to write this week and i was just <laughs> dreading Falling it asleep. oh my goodness it was so hard to get through it but i mean but then you get in the flow yeah. and it's like oh yeah this is good this is the good stuff yeah 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 i turn on my lo-fi beats playlist and i just <laughs> sit there and just go <laughs> Aww. well cool i'm i'm glad that you explained that because i think I, it'll help other people understand like computer science is everywhere right. no it really it, is it's literally, it's everywhere. literally everywhere yes yeah yeah so what do you do now for self-care and like supporting you're being like a full participant in society because i know that you are doing all the things still so okay um (laughs) so i'm i'm currently like working out i feel like all the time so yeah so that is part of my self-care um yeah and she lives good (laughs) good thank you go look at the youtube if you don't know (laughs) i had a i had a my birthday was in november and I had I had lost weight during the the first part of the pandemic, and then I got stagnant because I was tired of meal meal prepping. <laughs> I'm just over it. Yeah. And I I said, okay, I'm gonna hire a trainer, because because I don't want to be in the same place my next birthday. And mm. so that's where I focus most of my energy. Um, last year I was helping with planning uh, our virtual convention for Nesby. Um, so I I kind of I took a break from service Mm -hmm. in that aspect, but I'm starting to ramp up again. So I'm trying to choose where I want to devote some of my efforts, but I have a few things in mind. I just have to figure out time-wise where I'm going to put them because I Mm -hmm. try to do everything and I, we just talked about, we can't, Um, but yeah. Yeah. And now trying to get movies is probably one of my overall generic self-care. I love going to the movies. Except I for... love the movies <laughs> so much, but you know, movies are weird now a little bit. It's, yeah, it's, they're starting to get back, but it's still a little weird. And you can get a lot of them in your home too, so it's like I okay. don't want to say no. I, I want to go. You like the movie experience? I, I go to the Dolby Theater. I go oh, yeah. to the specific seats and <laughs> all the reclining. Seats. I do all oh, of yeah. that. I'm the huge screen. I don't want to sit in my house. I've, mm-hmm. I want to go. Makes sense. Movies and, needs to be this big. Yes. Not just like, oh, I'm in my sound bar right now. No, and I want <laughs> and I want curly fries. So no. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Going to the theater. Self care. Self care. Okay. And shopping. Oh, so great. Oh. I need to stop that. I haven't been shopping in a long time. Just been over here buying houses and nonsense. Really? Oh. You've been house shopping. <laughs> <laughs> That's a form of shopping. It's the worst. Right. You just put houses in your cart instead of like shoes. Yeah, you can, yeah, I need to stop. 
What's the problem? Do you? Anyways. No, yes, I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners before you go? Um, this has been so much fun. Uh, I enjoyed this tremendously. I was, I've been a fan. My Amazon, oh. my Amazon money goes to y'all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If y'all aren't already <laughs> doing it, put us on yes. your Amazon smile. It don't cost you nothing. No. But Amazon gives us a few cents for everything that Just you buy. Just a couple of pennies. Listen, yes. and I've been, but, and I've been buying, so. Thank you. So it go, it goes to y'all. Um, but thank y'all, you. I'm so proud of like the, the arc. It's not an arc. I'm not going to call it an arc. The trajectory of the podcast and everything since its inception. And y'all are just doing wonderful work. And just, yeah, every time someone's like, I want to go to tech, I was like, do you know about this podcast? (laughs) Have you you listened to it? Like, do do you know what you want to do? I think you should listen. Just, just listen. Thank you. But yeah, no, I think this is amazing. And I'm just so, so proud of you women. I just, mwah. Well, we thank know you're you. amazing, so yes. we are happy that you graced us with your presence today. Oh, thank you kindly. Thank you kindly. <laughs> Early on a Sunday, or Saturday. On a Saturday. Oh, I would have been up anyway. I would have been at the gym. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm. Yeah, my husband just left to go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go eat, so. Okay. Well, well that too. That's the that's opposite important. of going to the gym. Self-care. You got to eat, too. Right, you have to eat. It's not a one or the other. Yeah, but what I'm about to eat. Oh, well. Got it. Well, there's that. <laughs> Shame. Okay. <laughs> so, how do people follow you on the internet? Okay. So, I'm barely on Twitter, but it exists. Uh, I think <laughs> I think it's Hey Doctor P. I think I still kept that. Um, my Instagram is Doctor Makita R Phillips. So all of that, because one of the other ones got hacked. But, oh, and also there's like a screwdriver called Makita or something weird. Oh, it's a, t- it's oh, a tool company. That's a brand. It's a, brand. It's a tool kit. It's, yes. it's a brand. And then it's like the fact that your last name is a type of head. It's a type like, of head. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, it was a lot. and I have my own website, um, which I probably need to update, but it's, uh, Dr. Makita R. Phillips. Dot com. So, and we will link it. If you're looking at the website, it'll be linked. It'll be in the show notes, description, etc. If you follow us on the social media, it'll be there. So y'all can find us. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> find her at a homecoming at FAM. You, right, or the homecoming could, at FAM that she going to invite us or to. Or so don't find me at the homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on what time of the day. Yeah. Do not yeah. Find early in the day. Oh, early. Find me early. Find me, find me early, early or day. don't find me. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Find me on the Friday. Okay. Not the Saturday. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. But thank you so much, Makita. This was a joy. I'm so happy I, we got this time to chat with you to learn more about you, what you do. We hope everybody is just inspired by your story. And this is great. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Heart. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>